So we've spent a fair amount of time discussing UML class diagrams, how those are built, how we can convert those into the database tables and fields and relationships that we will use for our accounting information system. But we also want to make sure that we have clearly defined the business rules. for our processes. So basically when we have a business rule we've got a succinct statement of what we consider constraints on a business process. So succinct basically means we want to describe it briefly yet informatively. Many times we can actually deduce what some of the business rules are based on the diagram itself. So let's consider employees and company cars. If we know or if we see a class diagram that has a one-to-one -one relationship between employees and company cars, well then we know that a company car is assigned to an individual employee and each employee gets one company car for their exclusive use. Now if we have many to many relationship between company cars and employees well that means that tells us typically that we've got a pool of company cars employees are going to use them check them out be assigned to a car when they need it for a particular purpose turn it back in next time they need a company car maybe they get a different one therefore one company car might be used by many different employees so things like that can be captured fairly easily in a structure model. Other business rules may not be so easy to capture, so we want to make sure that we can describe the business rules constraining our processes so that we can diagram them properly. And a lot of these business rules are going to be, many will be written in text, not modeled. So you can think uh, real briefly about the only a valid licensed driver would drive the car. So even if we don't necessarily model a particular business rule, it should influence the old overall structure and flow. of the diagrams. We talked just briefly about how multiplicities can play a role. They can actually help define branching criteria. In BPMs, generally for a business rule you'll state it in phrases or short sentences. And we've got our object management group. They maintain standards. Yeah, for you texters, that's not what you think it means. Object management group maintains standards for semantics in business vocabulary. and business rules. SBVR. So there are actually some standards for how to describe various business rules that can be used and that helps keep things consistent as different people, different organizations document their processes. And business rules help make models simpler and easier to document. By restricting, you know, the number of different options that might be allowed in a particular business event. Now we have a number of 
types of business rules. First we have obligatory. So an obligatory rule is something that must occur, should occur. So we may require all payments uh, in, for our company, which is U.S. based, to be paid in U.S. dollars. There are pro prohibitions, so prohibited. Business rule may specify a, pro a prohibited activity. Should, can, not occur. And as you find out in many businesses, many businesses will not take a check. Or if they take a check, they will not take, for instance, an out-of-town check or an out-of-state check. So prohibited activity. And the third type of business rule shows when something is allowed. So in this case, may occur. but is not required. And in this case, in, in many cases, it might be one of several options that are available. So instance, we may accept a credit card, we may not accept a credit card. If, if a credit card is allowed, well, that doesn't mean customers can't pay cash. Uh, we may allow certain types of credit card, but prohibit American Express because American Express is, typically has higher transaction fees than other cards do. So basic types of business rules, obligatory, prohibited, or allowed, but not obligatory. So enforcing the business rules Well, you, you, your business rule has to be enforceable. You want to make sure that this is an activity or, or a, a rule that you can make sure that the business process follows or prohibits. And you can have various enforcement levels. ranging from strict enforcement which basically means we are not going to allow any violations we've got a pre override Well, what does that mean? Well, that means we can override in advance. Advance authorization required. We also have a post override. This is something where, you know, something may have slipped through the cracks. And here a violation is allowed if authorized after the fact. And then finally we've got guidelines. And these are rules that are generally followed but not enforced. So we may have a guideline that we clean the restrooms in our facility every hour on the hour. But sometimes if we have a big rush of customers, we may not have time to do that. So we may skip an hour or get there a quarter after the hour or whatever. Strict enforcement, pre-override, 
post override or guidelines, various types of business rule enforcement.